Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Mastering the Nick Collection. Several years ago, the Nick Collection of plugins was the number one set of plugins for Photoshop and Lightroom. Cashing in on their success, they sold off to Google. Google marketed the suite for a couple years with a few updates. Then they announced that they would not be updating the software any longer, and they made it free to download. Around that time, I did a set of training videos on the software that proved to be very popular. Recently, the company DxO purchased the rights to the Nick Collection and announced that they would be developing and updating it. Although it's no longer free, it is nice to have a caretaker for this software because it is very good. With all the good things happening with Nick, I decided to update my training videos on the product. This new series will be more in-depth and thorough than the previous series. Please be aware that I have no affiliation with the company, I'm not being paid by them to do these videos, and if you purchase the software, I will not be making a commission on the sale. With that said, if you could do me a favor, if you like these videos, please click the thumbs up button and share them. Finally, if you can make a donation, I would greatly appreciate it. That info is in the description below this video, along with a link to my code of ethics statement. Let's get started. In this video, we're gonna finish up our discussion of Viveza 2 by Nick Software by using it as a plugin in Photoshop. Now, as you can see, I have Photoshop open with this image. This was a raw file that I opened up in Photoshop. And when you open a raw file up in Photoshop, it will open up in Adobe Camera Raw. And all I did in Adobe Camera Raw to this image was basic tone adjustment. I adjusted the highlights, the shadows, the whites, and the blacks. And that was it. I just moved those four sliders. And now we're opened up in Photoshop. Now, in a previous video, I think it was in one of the Silver Effects Pro videos, I mentioned that when you open an image up um, in any Nick plugin from Photoshop, that you should convert the layer you're using or the layer that you're sending over as a smart object. When you do that, it will allow you to re-edit anything that you've done in that Nick plugin. If you don't do that, when you're done with the Nick plugin, those edits you did in Nick get written permanently to that layer and you won't be able to re-edit it. So I have this image and I want to create a smart object first. So to do that, because I just have this single background layer, I'm going to duplicate this layer. And because I'm using a Mac to do that, I'm going to hit Command J. If you have a PC, you'd hit Control J. Now, if you have a bunch of layers here and a bunch of adjustment layers, what you should do is create a merged layer of all those layers on top of the layer stack. And if you do have that situation, just click on the very top layer of all your layers. And then if you have a Mac, use the keyboard shortcut, Shift Option Command E as in Edward, and that will create a merge layer of all those layers on the very top. If you have a PC, use the keyboard shortcut Shift Alt Control E as in Edward. Once you have that merge layer on top, then create your smart object on that layer. Now, in this case, as I mentioned, I just had this single background layer, so I simply hit, hit Command J and created this um, layer on top. Now, I want to make this a smart object. And to do that, just right click on it and then go down to convert to smart object. And once that is done, it only takes a second, you'll see this little square in the corner that's um, showing that this layer is now a smart object. Now I'm ready to send it over into any Nick plugin that I'd like. And we're of course gonna do Viveza 2. So I'm gonna go up to Filter, then down to Nick Collection, then down to Viveza 2. Now, because it's a smart object, I'm going to get this warning. Viveza 2 has identified that the active layer is a smart object and will now operate as a smart filter. What that means, smart filter, means you could re-edit it when you're done. The brush button will be deactivated. Now, remember in previous videos, when we use any Nick software as a plugin in Photoshop, 
there's a little button that gets added to the NIC um, plugin and it says brush. And I've mentioned in those videos that that brush button, in my opinion, is relatively worthless. It doesn't really work that well, in my opinion. So no harm, no foul, as far as I'm concerned, that that brush button's deactivated. It's not going to be there. And if you're using Lightroom or a NIC software as a Lightroom plugin, that button isn't there ever, so you don't even notice it. The effect will be applied to the current layer, and the current layer, of course, is the smart object I just created, so we're going to click OK. All right, and then it's going to open this up into Viveza 2, and let's maximize that a little bit. And there's our image. Now, probably pretty much I've everything I'm going to be doing, I've covered already in the previous Viveza 2 videos, but in case you missed something, I'm sure this will help. To rehash, Viveza 2 really just works by control points mainly. When you begin though, you could do some global adjustments. And you could see over here on the right, it says global. And we could adjust all these different um, like features or things that are control in, controlled in the image. If you don't see all of these, click one of these little buttons right here. You might be on the um, compressed view and you're only going, to, only going to be seeing four sliders. Click right to the right of that and you'll have all of them. Now, I think the brightness is all right. I'm going to add some contrast globally, um, add a little saturation globally, and add some structure globally. And the shadows adjustment, if you move it to the right, you're going to open up the shadows. If you move it to the left, you're going to uh, crush the shadows. In this case here, let's just open them up a little bit and let's add a little warmth maybe just a little okay all right that's good now those are the global adjustments now let's add some control points i'd like to do something with that grass so i'm going to click right here where it says add control point and then i'm going to click on the grass so i have a control point on the grass and you can see the the area of influence i could make larger or smaller with the top slider and then I could adjust all these adjustments for this control point. So brightness, contrast, saturation, structure. I want to really add probably some brightness to the grass a little bit. It's a little kind of, um, I don't know, just doesn't look right to me. Now I'm going to go to where blue is. Now if I move blue to the right, it's going to add blue. If I move blue to the right, it's going to add the subtractive complementary color of blue, which is yellow. And I want to add a little yellow to the grass. So I'm going to probably bring that area of influence down a little bit. And then I'm going to just kind of, I want to make sure that it's mainly hitting just the grass. And to help me with that, I could go over here to the right and just click to the right of that control point. And it's going to give me this negative view. And wherever is white is what is being affected, and whatever is black is not being affected. Affected. Now you can see it's mainly, mainly affecting the grass. Where it's gray, it's affecting it a little bit. And it's okay if it affects those trees a little bit. I won't mind the foliage having a little bit of a yellow cast to it. So I'll turn that off by clicking on that button again. Now I want to duplicate it and get it more over towards the left side. So to do that, I'm going to hold my option key in. That's because I have a Mac. If you have a PC, it's the Alt key. And that duplicates it with the exact same settings. Put that there. And I want to put it in front of these condos over here on the far right. So I'm going to duplicate it again. Hold that Alt key in and or bring it over here. And uh, again, I actually, it's an option key on my Mac. And one thing to be aware of, wherever you put a control point, sometimes things kind of move around. So the actual size uh, for this one is this bottom slider right here. That's the size. So we're going to move it so it's best um, just affecting the grass. I think I want to try to get one over here on this little bit of grass over here. So just kind of being a little fussy about it. And I'm holding the Option key in again. Again, if you have a PC, it's the Alt key. Get it down there and there. So we added a little bit of um, 
kind of a yellow sheen to all that. Now, I want to group all these control points. I have five of them, all for the grass. So I'm going to go over here on the right panel, and I'm going to click on the first one. And then I'm going to hold the shift key down and click on the last one so they're all active. Then I'm going to go up here and click on group. So now they're in a group. And you'll see that just one of them looks like it's active. But this one actually controls all of them now. So if I go move this way to the left, you'll see how they're all being affected. So we'll just kind of get a little bit of more yellow sheen there. And maybe we'll add a bit of, I'm sorry, structure as well. So that looks pretty good. That affected all of them now because I have it in the group. Now, uh, I think I want to do something with the sky maybe. So we'll um, get another control point. And I'm going to click right here. And on this, I just really want to add structure. So we'll do that. And I'm going to duplicate it by holding the Option key. And again, if you have a PC, it's the Alt key. And then I'll duplicate it again and put it over there. So I got those three control points going across the sky. We're adding just structure to the sky. And I'm going to click on the first one, which is control point six. Hold the shift key in and click on the last one, which is control point eight. And I'm going to group those together. And then finally, I want to do something with these buildings. Um, they just look kind of dark. And they were really weren't that dark. They were a little brighter. So I'm going to add another control point. And I'm going to put it right on that building right there. And then I'm going to go to brightness and see which way moves brightness to the left now because again it depends where on the image where on the screen you're putting the control point because this is so far to the right all the sliders are offset to the left and they kind of work a little bit backwards so um, whereas these other control points to increase something you'd move it to the right well to increase brightness here I have to move it to the left I'm also going to increase uh, saturation a little bit just a little bit and maybe affect the size down a little bit so it's mainly affecting those buildings there maybe I'll duplicate it hold the option key in and bring it over to this side something like that Let me bring the size down a little bit like that Maybe on this one, I'm going to make this one a little different. I'm going to bring saturation up a little more on this one compared to that one. So I won't group those. I'll leave those alone. So I'd say that I'm done. So I'm going to click OK down here in the far right-hand corner. And when I click OK, it's going to now apply those adjustments I did to the smart object. And you could see that it even comes with a mask. So with the mask, if I wanted to remove any of the adjustment I did from any part of the image, I could paint black on the mask with a brush to remove it. So I could get a brush. I could paint in black. So black is the foreground here. And if I wanted to remove any of these adjustments, click on the mask, make sure that's active, and then I could come in and remove it. I don't want to do that, but you could see how it's removing the adjustment. That's pretty much what the brush does when that's active in the NIC uh, plugin. So because that's why they deactivate it because, because, is because we have a smart object now, you could do it with the mask. So I'm going to undo that. I'm just going to hit Command Z to undo that. Now, I mentioned you could re-edit this. And again, I'll demonstrate. Just double click right where it says Viveza. And it's going to come up with this smart layer again, smart object. Just click OK. It's going to open in a Viveza 2. And you can see that our two groups are there, our two control points are there. I could make this control point active. And I could come in and just readjust it if I want. So I could readjust my adjustments as much as I want. I could come in with saturation, increase that. Let's say, so I wanted to adjust that control point. I actually made that a little bit radioactive, but that's okay. We'll click OK. 
and then it's going to save it again. So I could do that as many times as I like, and you could see that it uh, readjusted those buildings down there. They're way more saturated and a little brighter. So that's our wrap up of Aveza 2. Um, to <clears throat> also mention what I mentioned in the last video, uh, Color um, Effects Pro 4 to me is a little more versatile. And I think with Color Effects Pro 4, because it has so many filters in it, you could do just about anything you're doing in Viveza 2, you could do in Color Effects Pro 4, but you could do more. So that's why between the two, I always use Color Effects Pro 4. I don't think I really use Viveza 2 at all. But all of us are different, and some of us like to use, like I know a very famous photographer that uses Viveza 2 exclusively. Um, so you know, teach his own, whatever works for you, whatever works in your workflow. Now, when we save this image as a Photoshop file, this smart object is still editable or re-editable. So you could just save it as a PSD file and you'll be fine. You could come back in and re-edit this, re-edit your Viveza adjustments or any NIC uh, plugin that you used on a smart object to be able to re-edit that. So that's it for Viveza 2. I'm not sure which one we'll talk about next, but next week we'll talk about another NIC plugin as we work through all of them in the uh, bundle of NIC plugins. Um, that's it. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.